I'm Pauline and I'm here with Udi Nier um, from hashtag uploading holocaust. Um, hello, nice hello, to hello. meet you. Um, have you been on the journey to Poland yourself? And if so, what did you feel during the journey? Uh, yes, I have. I went on a journey to Poland when I was 17 as a school, um, as I was in school. Um, it was a very um, strong experience as I remember it. Um, and strongest of all was the feeling that um, it was like a feeling that I need to feel something that I'm not yet feeling. It's a very strange kind of um, experience. Um, you could also, I think, see it in the movie where you sort of have a feeling that there's something that you need to go through and you can't really put your fingers uh, or your head around it um, and you are constantly in this um, feeling that you're missing something although you're there and you're seeing what you're supposed to see and listening to what you're supposed to listen to but somehow it's it's not it um, that was the strongest impression that I had okay thank you um, how did the idea come up to produce uh, a film which is made out of YouTube videos and according to what criteria did you choose the videos? Mm -hmm. We actually started by doing a very standard documentary about the topic of this unique journey to Poland. Uh, we contacted some schools and started actually to film them um, and then we needed for technical reasons to make some kind of trailer or some kind of um, you know, some kind of video to present what the movie is going to be like. Um, and we just sat at home and said, okay, let's just look online, maybe on YouTube there's a clip or two and we can edit something out of that um, to show how it's going to look. And then we clicked the journey to Poland on YouTube and there were 20,000 results. By now it's already 30,000, two years later, so expanding all the time. Um, and when we saw that there are 20,000 videos and started to briefly have a look at them, we thought, wait a minute, if there are already so many hours of footage um, of this journey to Poland and if anyways we are dealing with commemoration and how we tell history and this is the new way maybe that it's told um, we said okay maybe as our role as filmmakers now is not to um, produce more noise into this endless sea of video but to just try and edit it and make some sense of it so we just started to randomly see endless amounts of videos um, sort of very quickly going through them and once something strikes you as and this is maybe the criteria once something strikes you as authentic so not something that is very external or artificial but something you, you can see that one of the students or the teachers are actually saying something or experiencing something very genuine then we stopped and, and said okay this we watch again later um, in the film there are often teachers telling their students that they sort of have to feel something. Um, do you think this is the right educational method? Uh, the short answer is definitely not. Um, this is also what I was speaking about in my personal experience. So I remember this feeling of being pressured to feel something and you know emotions is not, are not really or genuine emotions, real emotions, is not something that you can create artificially or press people to do. You can stress them enough so they so show some emotion, but it's not necessarily what's really there. Um, and also, I don't really see the point in, in this kind of pressure. Um, I can understand somehow why teachers do it. I mean, this is how the system structures this kind of journey, and this is what is expected of the students and the teachers, but I, I definitely have some criticism about this. How would you change it if you could? The journey to Poland? Maybe, in general, yes, or? the methods of the journey? I have a lot of questions about the journey in general. Uh, I'm not sure that the journey to Poland is the best way, um, or I'm actually pretty sure that it's not the best way to deal with the Holocaust, especially with the young Israelis. Um, just to give an example, why not just meet Holocaust survivors in Israel? They are, they are there, there are a lot of them. Um, that could be a very direct and uh, immediate way to get to know the subject and hear stories. You don't really have to go there. And I think going there and the methods around it, like the one you described, um, are not... I don't know if they're productive, and if they are productive, I don't know if they produce the right thing. My last question is, um, who do you want to reach with your film and why? Definitely young people, not only, but, but definitely young, young people, uh, both Israelis who are either facing the decision of going or not going to Poland or in, to this journey or, or in general are trying to deal with the, this topic of the Holocaust um, and maybe we can try and raise some questions or maybe even offer an alternative somehow. 
Um, I think it's also very interesting for Germans, young Germans and Germans in general. I mean, whenever you deal with a topic like the Holocaust, um, you always have Israelis and Germans as your, in a way, immediate audiences because they have very strong historical links to the topic. Um, and then sort of worldwide, I mean, it's not limited. One of the beautiful things about this project for us is the use of, the use of uh, YouTube materials. It's the first documentary made this way, and I think it's really interesting to... Uh, for everyone to see what kind of documentation is being done by users of YouTube and how how can we work with with this documentation as filmmakers. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>